here's my applicator. All right, as I'm teaching, I'm always telling people that I use it until it's way down to the very end. So you can see how long I've been using this because of all the rubber bands I've got added. I'm just about out here, but I still have enough to be able to show you what I'm gonna be doing today. Probably some more ornaments, different things. So until I can't get any more out, I use the, I just use it. All right, so I'm gonna show you here. And all this comes in our kit, so I'm not gonna go over a whole bunch of stuff. Here's my storage bag, or my storage box. So when I'm working during the day, and you can see I use my old one, I didn't get a nice new one or anything to show off. There's during the day, here's store, here's cleanup. Put the lid on, I'm done. There's prep, there's cleanup, okay? So, and this doubles as my palette. So before I start, I'm gonna put out, where's my thing, here's medium. Okay, medium is another product that of course Unique Glass Colors manufactures. And what I use it for here with mud is I dress my brush in it. It will, it, it will hold the bristles together better and um, kind of stick them together actually. So especially for making three dot clusters, it's excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a drop or two on the corner. And I love these, these lids that we use because see this nice little ridge that's right in here? Holds it right there and I can see it really well. All right, I wanna just, a reminder, in the kit, and I'm gonna kind of smooth this around, there's this whole sheet that comes in a mud kit on how to do things. All right, here's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be using, we're gonna be doing three dot, what I call them, fillers, leaves, snowflakes, daisy petals, clusters, kind of whatever. Here I'm showing you that they kind of tuck in between some flower petals. Here I'm showing you start to finish on kind of a cluster of leaves. All right, what I get asked a lot is I can't get a long tail. They end up looking like ferns or something. All right, so this is what this is for. Is a little kind of like I said a snippet of how, what to, what to do, what the problems are. All right, first off, when you're putting um, dots on, don't do this. You're not decorating a cake. This is straight on, sideways. Come in from the side and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And my fingers are just below that cupper so that I'm on the bag. Um, it's very very easy to use. I've got tell you my medical history here. I've got arthritis in my right hand, so the last thing we wanted was for, to develop a product that was going to hurt my hand after after demoing for days and days, you know, and hours during the day. So it's very, very easy to use, hence the name mud. All right, here I'm dressing my brush, and I'm using Margot's Miracle Brush. Um, it's a sable brush made for me um, by FM Brush Company. All right, now, let me take this away because I want you to see. I've flattened that brush in the medium. I might even come up a little bit closer here. So that the brush is flattened, I'm gonna use the corner of the brush, and I'm going to touch the corner of the brush into the middle dot, just the corner, and then I'm going to continue down. Look how far, that's what I want you to practice when you're doing it. How far can you come down on that? Then on the second one, and bring it into that first line. Then the third one, and bring it into that first line. I can tell, can you see me shaking a little bit? Had too much coffee today. But if I can do this with too much coffee and a little bit of shaking, then I expect you to be able to do with a little bit of practice. So here's what, the, what a lot of times the problem is, is, let me show you a wrong one, is people go ahead and they make the three dots or they put them right together, okay? The mud is going to all turn into one big dot when they're together like that because it's very liquid. So keep the dots separate, okay? So now, this is wrong, just so that you know. This is what I see people doing. They get the first one and the second one and the third one and they wonder what what's wrong with it well because you've not brought these back where they belong they need to go into the first one into the first one so you should only have one line coming out from them all right so let's move over here now yeah, straight is fine they can tuck in between flowers like I showed you um, so let me give you some examples as I'm going along. So using it straight. So here I've used them straight. Let's get, oh, got some glare. Okay, let's turn it so you can see there. All right, so here I've used them straight and I've got a clumping of five. 
and they're straight on into this one little point here. So I start off always with three, then how much room? Do I have room to add more? I'll add more. So here's the way that I've used them coming straight on down. But you don't always want to do that, so you want to have some curvy things and some pretty things. So I'm right-handed. So it doesn't make any difference though. You have to go, everybody has to go from the right and the left. So your same three dots to start. Go back to your palette and flatten that brush. You may have to do that every couple of strokes because if that brush gets off that chisel edge, you're going to get a fat, um, a fat stem. So now you're going to actually pull the brush with your thumb and keep the curve. So I'm going to curve. I'll pull the second one into that curve and I'll pull the third one into the same curve. Curve. All right, so of course, if you go one way, you've got to be able to go the other way. And again, I'm going to go right back to the palette, get my chisel edge back before I even start. So this way, I'm going to actually push the brush that way with my thumb. And I'm going to curve this way and then pull that in. And oh, look at that one. I measured that one in two. So because I've got three dots, if two finishes nicely, stop. Don't think that you got to do all three. You want, this is what you want. You want, an, you want a nice little starting there. All right, let's keep moving around here. Now, I'm going to make a series of leaves like, like here. Okay, you got a couple of things. You can actually, let me get my sheet back. You can start by giving yourself some lines, or you can just go for it. I'm, I'm quite fond of going for it. All right, so I'm going to start off by one, two, three. Okay, same thing that I've been showing you, all right? And I'm going to curve this way. Okay, let me get back up here a little bit. Okay, curve this way. So I've established the beginnings of that leaf. Okay, and you see, here's the other thing. Ooh, ooh, almost forgot this. You see that that one is way taller than those two? Okay, that's the other thing that I see people doing. They make them all in a row, like so, and then wonder why it doesn't have a point. Okay, well, you didn't give it a point. So there's going to be the point of your leaf. So now I think, where would I like this? Okay, I think I would like to start out here. Arbitrary. The only thing you have to do, because freehand is so much easier if you just let yourself do it, because then you're not stuck with a pattern. The only thing I have to do is touch that center and cut it into the first line that I established. Okay? This is where you get the flow. So let's do it over here and don't have to line them up. They don't have to be exactly the same. Let me turn this just a little bit, because I'm going the other direction. Chisel edge on the brush, curve it in, curve it in, and curve it in. And curve it into what? Curve it into that first line. All right, so you think, oh, look at there. Oh, my gosh. All right, so let's, let's just stick with three for this little snippet. All right, so now they look kind of like ferns, or they could be filler flowers, or they could be a lot of different things. But what if you want to build that up just a little bit? All right, don't line them up come out to the side. Make it a little bit wider than what those first three were. And what are you going to do with them? You're going to cut them in to this main stem line. Now they don't all have to form a big clump up there. What they're doing is you're um, establishing direction. And you do one little cluster at a time. Don't do all three of them thinking, well, I'll just save myself time. All you're going to do is the mud is going to start to dry and you're going to be unhappy. Now look at there. I can even go back because it's not quite dry all the way and fluff it up just a little bit. Okay, so here, look at here. This one is closer, so I can't add as many to this one as I could to those other ones because I don't have enough space. Is that all right? Yes. I like to tell people I'm the grandmother. We're doing mud, so if I say it's okay, it's okay. Now you see how that's building up? So I come back and I say, oh, I like that. Well, maybe I'd like a little bit more. 
again a little bit further out and you do these one at a time let's see how my chisel edge is holding up oh good okay and here all right and cut that in now do I want to add more or am I good oh I think one more you see here what I'm not doing is doing each one exactly the same what have I got room for if I've got room for it, stuck it in there. If I don't have room for it, then I'm not going to do it. All right, let's put one more down here. And I like them when they're not, everything doesn't match and make, look so perfect. You see there, we've got one that's got less. We've got two that curve that way. He's curving that way. But what you do have is you've got flow. And that's what the whole thing is. You want this to flow. Now let me show you a couple of examples of what you'd be doing with these things. Okay, so if you do them this way look at there and I, I hate to measure I just absolutely despise it so what I do is I start with the dot and then I put a section here and a section here and here and here divide the two sections and now I got eight and then put three more in between each one that I created All right I got a snowflake or I have a daisy Depends on what you do with it. If you're gonna, if you put it with um, leaves, you've got flowers. If you keep it all by itself and add a whole bunch of them, uh, you've got snowflakes. All right. What else can we can we do with these things? Look at here. I do adore ornaments. So here, I'm using them. I put a lot of leaves on first, and then my last thing that I came and did was any place I had some empty space, I put clusters. So this is why you need to practice them going curving so that you can curve them into the existing stems. All right, here on this ornament, I didn't use anything. Let's get a nice one here. But these clumps, and again, establish your curve, bring them in, keep going until it looks good to you. There's no right or wrong. It just has to look good to you. Or here, let's make, we make, I made flowers, and then I tucked them in as leaves just little small groupings alright and this is fun when you're looking for ornaments see if you can find some that already have a design see that sparkly stuff that was already there so all I'm doing then is starting here and just keep going 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 until I have enough space to start doing three play with them but you gotta be you gotta practice so that you get them nice and neat and that they're a, a dot and a long line they're not a big comma stroke no commas Look at this one. This is mine. How do you like that one? I mean, there, is that is that a lot of is that a lot of little clusters? Oh, I just love doing that. But again, you got to practice your flow. I think we only have one or two more things. I think just one. And this is just going to be a corner. This is a mirror that I did, and I started off by just doing these roses in the corner, and then I kind of came up, and then I started adding some more flowers, and then the last thing I did was any place I had space was I came in and I tucked in clusters. Some of them are four, some of them are three, there's probably twos, but these are uses for the three dot clusters and why it is that you want to practice them. Um, you did see all these embellishments. I am going to tell you that I'm a part of Art Playdate, and that's something that you can join on my website, um, www.margoclark.com, and I'm going to actually be showing how I put these embellishments on and then how I design around them because freehand is so much easier, especially on an ornament. Okay, I think that's going to cover today using my three-dot clusters. If I've forgotten anything, I'll get it in another snippet. All right, thank you.